Marianne Wolfe, and I'm the director of the Center for Reading and Language Research at Tufts University. And I'm an expert on reading children and dyslexia, and my particular area is the reading brain. And I've written a book that's called Proust and the Squid, The Story and Science of the Reading Brain. And with that unlikely title, I'm trying to introduce into the public an understanding of the beauty and complexity of the reading brain and how it was never meant to be there. And indeed, it only came thousands of years after our present brain existed and gives us a kind of insight or window into the brain of a child with dyslexia because indeed that brain was here before we ever learned to read. And that, that set of facts sets us up to understand something about dyslexia that's so important, and that is that that brain was meant to be here. My colleague Gordon Sherman uses the term cerebrodiversity to describe how we need, as, an, as the evolution of a species, to have different organizations of the brain. So the brain of a child with dyslexia actually was here before reading. And why? because that brain has so many talents and strengths that have to do usually with building, with art, with architecture, and very importantly, with thinking differently, with thinking outside of the box. Um, there's no coincidence that about 35% of entrepreneurs today, and undoubtedly the history of art and art, artists and architectures over the last two centuries, not to forget Leonardo da Vinci, have a history of dyslexia. There's no coincidence. It's a beautiful brain that happens to be disadvantaged for certain aspects of language processing. The relationship between spoken language and reading is a beautiful one and both complex and very simple. Reading can't occur without an understanding of language. Now, I liken reading to a circuit. The brain doesn't have one center for reading. It doesn't even have a gene that's specific for reading. Rather, what reading represents is a circuitry in which parts of the brain, which were originally there for other purposes, language, perception, cognition, affect, all of these are connected in a circuit. The most important ones of these, of course, involve all the aspects of language that we use in oral, plus. But everything that is important in oral language is also important to get connected inside that reading circuit. So we have phonology, our understanding of sounds. We have meaning, uh, the semantic system. We have syntax, how words work in sentences and stories. We have morphology, how these little parts of words play really important roles. And finally, we have orthography, how our understanding of letter patterns hooks up to that language system. And underlying all of that is our conceptual knowledge, our intelligence. So when we think of reading, what's so fascinating is that we are talking about bringing together all the parts of language to particular parts of perception, to our cognition, our intelligence, to our feeling system, our affect. Together, that makes a reading circuit, and at the heart of it are all those aspects of language. One of the beautiful aspects of the evolution of our imaging techniques is that we can actually look inside and see how the brain of a child who's a typical reader and how the brain of a child with dyslexia is activated during different processes. And what you see in the child with a dyslexic organization is that they have more difficulty, by and large, processing the smallest units of sound in our language. These are called phonemes. But we're also discovering other things that are equally interesting. And this is going to be an evolving picture. We're also seeing that there are delays in the way the parts of the reading circuit. Now remember, when we read, we are using many parts of our brain and they form a circuit. So what we're seeing is that the speed with which 
those parts of the brain come together to get integrated, that speed is slower. It's slower in processing letters and processing words. It's slower in connecting the phonemes to the meanings. So the whole circuitry that's involved in reading is less efficient, probably because, and here's another thing that's emerging, areas in the right hemisphere that ordinarily aren't used by typical readers in reading are being used in that organization of the dyslexic brain. So those very areas which give them undoubted strengths in processing spatial and, and, and pattern recognition information, they are holding on to the processing instead of crossing over to the left hemisphere and having it by and large a left hemisphere act. So what we, what we know are two things and what we suspect are three. The first is there are weaknesses in the way children process phonemes, those minimal units of sounds. Second, we know there is a processing speed difference in, where, uh, in which the component parts of reading come together. And third, we suspect there is a right hemisphere set of strengths that hold on and, in fact, are slowing the process and the efficiency of language processing down. When anyone asks me what we could do about children with dyslexia, the first thing I want the world to know is that it exists. It is a it is a different organization of a brain that is a wonderful brain, a brain that has been here long before reading occurs. So the absolute first thing is a reconceptualization of dyslexia for everyone. The second is that that understanding is made available to the child, to the parent, to the peers, and to the teachers, and to the school systems not just in this country, but around the world. We need to know this is a, a very fine brain with a somewhat different organization. So the first thing is knowledge. The second thing is professional development. We need to teach our teachers what reading is. So many teachers don't understand the beauty and the complexity, and that we who are involved with children and individuals with dyslexia, it's not their fault that they aren't learning to read. It is ours. We haven't figured out how each child will learn best. So one of the most important messages is this is a fantastic brain. It can learn. Our responsibility is to figure out how that brain learns best. So professional development is, is the second thing. Reconceptualization, professional development, and then changing all of our states. There's an organization, Literate Nation, that is trying to get this information to everyone, to parents, to states, to policymakers, to business people. Literacy affects everyone. Our children with dyslexia should never be deprived of access to literacy. This is probably one of our most interesting brains as a species. We cannot have it lost in its contribution to society. If I could do anything for the children and individuals with dyslexia, it is to root out this insidious myth that children who can't learn to read are dumb or are stupid or are not working to potential. What I want everyone to understand that there is reading and there is intelligence. And the reading circuit is about putting together all these parts with a child's intelligence. The intelligence of a child is not shown by whether they can learn to read or not. And it is an assumption that is, that is shared by so many people and makes children who can't learn to read feel stupid. One of the absolute most important things we do is to decouple the myth that intelligence and not learning to read go together. We have to decouple that.